The last two pathways involved in emesis include the one from the chemoreceptor trigger zone to the vomiting center and the one from the GIT to the vomiting center. The neurotransmitter is serotonin-3, which is abbreviated 5-HT3, is used in several critical sites in both of those pathways, so you'd probably predict that a 5-HT3 antagonist would be a very effective antiemetic. And indeed, on Dancitron, Dolacitron, and other Cetron drugs, which are the 5-HT3 antagonists, are invaluable in especially difficult-to-treat situations such as chemotherapy-induced emesis. 5-HT3 is a very specific type of serotonin, and that specific neurotransmitter is not used in many other places other than the vomiting pathways, so those medications are associated with relatively few side effects. The biggest problem with the Cetron drugs is that they're very expensive. Another neurotransmitter that's seen in several places along these two pathways is the dopamine 2 neurotransmitter. And once again, as you probably predicted, the dopamine 2 antagonists are effective in reducing vomiting caused by irritation in the GIT and to some extent in the chemoreceptor trigger zone. The dopamine 2 antagonists include Prochlorperazine and metoclopramide. Although those medications are relatively inexpensive, they are associated with many more side effects than the Cetron drugs because dopamine 2 is a neurotransmitter used throughout the brain. As a matter of fact, most antipsychotic drugs are dopamine antagonists and they're associated with many effects including a number of different involuntary movements. Right now, let's take a clinical scenario to try to cement in your understanding of which antiemetic would be used in which situation. Chemotherapy-induced vomiting is extremely challenging to treat. The chemotherapy itself damages the stomach so there's many messages from the stomach to the vomiting center. In addition, the drugs are sensed by the chemoreceptor trigger zone, and there's additional messages that are sent to the vomiting center. And using that information and what you've just learned about antiemetic drugs, try to figure this one out. James is on chemotherapeutic drugs and needs something to relieve the nausea and vomiting that the drugs are causing. What relief, if any, is he going to get from the following medications? Bismuth subsalicylate, or Pepto-Bismol, Diphenhydramine, a histamine-1 antagonist, Hyocene, or sometimes called scopolamine, an anticholinergic drug, Lorazepam, a benzodiazepine, Metoclopramide, a dopamine 2 receptor antagonist, and ondansetron, a serotonin 3 or 5-HT3 antagonist. And let's go through each one of those to see if James is likely to get relief from using those. Bismuth subsalicylate, or Pepto-Bismol, acts locally, decreasing inflammation and decreasing stomach acid in the stomach. It may soothe the stomach a little bit, but it's not going to decrease the vomiting. Diphenhydramine is a histamine-1 antagonist that decreases nausea and vomiting that originates in the inner ear. So, it's very good at relieving motion sickness, but you wouldn't expect it to be of any use whatsoever in chemotherapy-induced nausea and vomiting. Hyocene, or sometimes called scopolamine, is an anticholinergic drug, so it's against the rest and digest system. It's good to treat motion sickness and decreases some spasms in the GIT, so unless there's profound spasms associated with the chemotherapy, it's not likely to help James much. Lorazepam is a benzodiazepine. 
And those are only effective for emesis that originates in the higher brain center. And sometimes lorazepam and other benzodiazepines are used in combination with many other medications for chemotherapy-induced vomiting, but it's not effective on its own for emesis from chemotherapy. Metoclopramide is a dopamine 2 antagonist, and dopamine 2 is used in a few places in the GIT and also to some extent in the chemoreceptor trigger zone. The medication is also fairly inexpensive, so James may be prescribed metoclopramide in the first instance, usually on a fairly high dose. The problem is that James may not be able to tolerate the side effects, which include movement disorders. And finally, ondansetron is a 5-HT receptor antagonist, a serotonin-3 antagonist. And you see the 5-HT3 all through the GIT and the chemoreceptor trigger zone pathways. The cetron drugs are the most effective medications for reducing chemotherapy-induced vomiting, and they're well-tolerated as well because that specific neurotransmitter is used in very few places other than the vomiting center. 